You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hi, I'm Joe Heath. I'm Tony Heath. And this is the Watchathon of Rassilon presents the Watchathon of Avon. I don't think any of these names hold up. That one works. I don't know. This is the first one I ever seen, isn't it? You got to tell them what they're watching because it does what we're watching. Because the Watchathon of Avon means nothing. Yeah, especially considering he's not even in this episode. I'll tell you what it is after this theme song. <laughs> I forgot how the podcast works. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about Blake 7, the British BBC sci-fi classic. We're going to be talking about the first episode, The Way Back, which aired January 2nd, 1978. If you want some context for that, Doctor Who context. <laughs> what? I just hope the patron saw the full body wiggle you did <laughs> when you said Doctor Who context. You really need to pay that extra just for... <laughs> my beautiful You won't see me, though, because I'll be... Hiding behind the microphone. Hello. Anyway, for the Doctor Who context, this aired between the season 15 serials, The Sunmakers, and Underworld. Two facts! Which one's Underworld? Underworld's the one that has the literal minions in it, and a lot of CSO. Too Uh, much CSO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you know The Sunmakers. Yes. I hope you do. You push for it being the best Fourth Doctor serial. It's one of the times I felt the most insane while watching Doctor Who, and that really (laughs) does it for me. Now we're going to be talking about this show, this pilot, which I want to first off say special thanks to Steve Conway, because he's the one that pushed for this. Yeah. And it has a lot of ties with Doctor Who. Terry Nation wrote this episode, which scared me. If you watch the watch-along of... of (laughs) I just make an O, a very disappointed O. (laughs) When Terry Nation's name pops up on screen, we both just kind of go, "Uh uh-oh. Spoiler alert, we were very wrong. Yeah, he actually wrote, like, I think the first six or so episodes, maybe more. Also, um, they use the Rassilon logo at some point during the show. I didn't, you had said that at the beginning, I didn't notice it. Not in this episode. Oh, okay. Just in the show in in general. Uh, A lot of the people in the show have been on Doctor Who. The guy Avon that's not in this episode, but is in literally every other episode of Blake 7. He played two characters on Doctor Who. One of which is like, I think it was just like a unit guy. And one of whom was the only good part of Time Lash. (laughs) The like interesting villain who dies way too soon before we dive into it any deeper let's do a quick summary of this episode okay go Ah. (laughs) there's uh i put you on the spot i i have a spot here that says summary and i was gonna write something and i didn't well here's i i'm gonna go from memory okay Okay. this is gonna be fun (laughs) um first of all it whatever version we had it opened twice yeah I don't know if that's just where you got it from. It had what was like clearly a remastered introduction and then the real introduction. Yeah, it had like a CGI ship and then the real intro, which was honestly better. Yes. (laughs) It opens with a very sad loaf of bread of a man (laughs) being led about by his conspiracy theory friend. Two of them, two of them. Yes. Who I thought were going to be important. Uh, We'll say the loaf of bread man. His name is His name is Blake. Raj Blake, right? Sure. I think R-O-J. And basically they have told him that they have news about his family, which is off-world. They're going to get him that information by doing lots of illegal things, like going outside and talking with people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sneaking around and being illegal. But basically when he gets there, they're like, oh, you've been the leader the whole time. Then he sees everyone get murdered. Everyone. All the characters that they just introduced you to that you thought were going to be, like, important, maybe, 
no. The cops just show up and murder like 20 people. I think you need to go a little bit more in depth about what it means that he used to be the leader. He used to be the leader. He, he used of to the be the leader resistance. of the resistance. And then they brainwashed. They, they wiped his memory. Yes. That's why he doesn't remember. And then they you make You put him... me on the spot. And I now know. you want to criticize? I just, I want to clarify. Right. Not like he's secret. Because it could be come across like, actually, he was the leader the whole oh, time. God. It but did no. do that. We got that double oh, yeah. twist of there's the shot. So they, they go out, outside of the city, right? Which involves them like, it seems like a very long process of hacking. Hacking? Hacking. This very long process of hacking these, like, I guess, airlock doors. Mm -hmm. It's more complicated than just going outside. And so there's this shot of, like, a person watching them do this. And they leave the door open, too, and that still drives me crazy. It's like, if you're sneaking around, you have to... your tracks. Yeah, close the door behind you. So there's... And it's a really long shot, and you're like, oh, no, someone's watching them, someone's following them. And then that guy gets there, and he's like... And they're like, oh, hey, Bob. Or I don't remember his name. I don't remember it either. And you're like, oh! I thought he was bad, but it turns out he's one of them. But then later... It turns out he's bad! He's bad again! He's I got, the one who led all of them to massacre all of these people. I got double twisted. Uh, and also, his, uh, Blake's family is dead and has been dead for a long time. Yeah, they're not really off-world somewhere. They died as part of the resistance. So, anyway, he witnesses the massacre, then what? Because that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning, and then I spend a decent amount of time thinking we're in a flashback, I won't lie to you. Because they, they do flashback to his, like, torture mind wiping, and he's yeah. in prison. And I was like, oh! So we're back to him, like, being in prison from when he got mind wiped. But it's not! He's in prison from when he got arrested for being... I, why didn't they kill him at the massacre? They killed everybody but oh, him. Oh, they didn't see him at the massacre. Because he had, like, wandered off. Right. Because he was like, this is a lot of information to process. I'm going to wander for a bit. And then he saw them coming and then hid. But then they do find him and then arrest him. So, like, there's a good chunk of, like, the cell room scenes where he's, like, in prison and people are talking to him that I thought this was, like, the first time he had been arrested for, like... Oh. An embarrassingly long time. I did not realize this. That's on no one but me. I was unaware of this. I followed it just fine. No, yeah. I'm fully, that's on me and my own comprehension skills. Yeah, the only flashback they show has no dialogue in it, and they show it three times. <laughs> no joke, they show it three times. By the time it finally clicked, I felt very, like... I don't know why that took me so long. So, uh, sum up the rest of the episode real quick. I don't know. I, you do the rest. <laughs> you got halfway. Yeah. Okay, so, yes, they catch him, they imprison him, and he tries to tell him, like, you know, I saw this happen and everything, and then they say that, like, he is... You know what they did to him? They groomer slurred him. They groomer slurred him, yeah. They, uh, they say that he did something with children. <laughs> Which they is, don't say exactly what. It's just did a thing with minors. Which is distressingly pertinent. Rel yeah, relevant yeah. to this day and age. Gotta save the children. But uh, they, they put these false charges against him, and there's witnesses and all this stuff. Then it becomes sort of like a detective show with his, I with guess, his lawyer. lawyer. And his lawyer for like a significant part of this is kind of the main character. And he's cool. I love him. His And his... I guess his wife or girlfriend or whatever, they're they're very sweet. They have a whole expo exposition scene while they're just making out. Yes! <laughs> Which, like, to me is very believable. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. They're just very, like, a lived-in relationship that you don't get to see a lot on TV because usually it's either, like, new love or broken love. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to just, like, oh, they're just sweet and having a good time <laughs> and trying to solve this mystery. Basically, he... Because fucking... Blake's just in prison this whole thing. <laughs> he really is. He doesn't do anything. He's just in prison, you guys. He meets a couple of other prisoners. For a little, some little of friends bit. Like... For, a, for a scene or two. Yeah. And that, but like, if, but the rest of this is this lawyer like trying to solve try, what, happened? what happened and trying to get him out of prison. And you're like, okay, so I don't fully, I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about it. Either. I had no expectations, so I'm like, so it's kind of like a like a space law and order, <laughs> or what's the deal here? I'll say it's really tense. It's really tense, and it's wild, and everyone you grow attached to and think might be a major character fucking dies. <laughs> 
Yeah, so he like spends this whole episode uncovering the cover up. He finds out like the the witnesses were all taken like the day before from like it's like sc- school children, right? Yeah. And like they had all the day before had like been taken out of the school for some reason that was classified. So he's like, oh, they brainwashed them. They they made- implanted. False memories. And he basically... Also distressingly relevant. Look up the satanic panic. That's all. Okay. And so he takes this to the higher-ups, and they have him killed, basically. Like, you think, oh, he's finally got the information to get Blake free. And at the very end of the episode, they're murdered. They're murdered! And then Blake is carted off to a prison. Okay. Prison planet or something. So it's just like, it's really tense, and it's a really good episode of, like, television, but also at the end of it, you're like, who the fuck is the cast of this show? I mean, I kind of know. It's I mean, obviously it's Blake and the two... The Thief and the Smuggler? The Thief and the Smuggler. Which, by the way, great characters. Absolutely. Like, they get so little screen time. Thief in particular is great. They get so little screen time and I'm 100% like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I'm on I'm on board with these guys. They're great. But it's wild. Like, yeah, it is wild. It's I, wild. I kind of loved it not knowing anything about it, though, you know? Yeah. Because you're like, oh, so this is what the episode... Oh, it's not... Because, like, first you're like... There were, like, three like, different times where you're like, okay, so this is the show. Okay, so this is the... And by the time it ends, you're like... I don't fucking know what the show is. It did so many That's unexpected not how things. That's pilots were. <laughs> I know. Because, like, first you're like, oh, so it's this guy who used to be the leader, and now he reteams with the, the resistance. Okay. They're going to, like, take him and, like, try to train. Oh, no, they're no, all they're dead. They're all dead. Everyone we just met, dead. Okay, so I guess it's, like, trying to clear his name. No, it's not about clearing his name either. The only guy who could do it is it's dead. dead. What you said when it ended was, like, Oh, so they're, they're going to do Farscape. They're going to do a Farscape next. And once you had said that, I was like, I kind of wonder how much Farscape pulls from this show. Yeah, and I think I looked into it a little bit, and I'm pretty sure that is the case, is that the next episode is he teams up with those people and they take over the ship, the prison ship that they get taken off in at the end of the episode. They sort of take over it. And that's the show? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's. I think there's still like a lot of like you know resistance and. I mean, it's just because imagine political intrigue. And imagine whatnot. pitching a show called like Joe Six and being like, <laughs> "You're gonna meet Joe and two other guys in the pilot, and that's it." Yeah, <laughs> is, like, I, that's another thing. Is there seven people with Blake, or is is Blake one of the seven? So is it seven or eight people? You know what I mean? I literally don't know. Maybe it's some sort of slang that we're unaware of too. <laughs> Also, I have to say, I did not know that it was possessive this whole time. This whole time, people have been, like, talking about Blake 7 on the podcast and, like, mentioning it. And then we sat down to watch it and, like, the logo goes up and it's Blake's... It's not possessive in the logo. It's possessive somewhere, though. Uh, It is everywhere, like, on the internet and everything. Everywhere. It's possessive. And I was like, nobody says Blake 7. And I saying it out loud, I was like, oh. You thought it was Blake... Seven. Like, except those two S's run, there's no way yeah. to distinguish those two S's from each other. <laughs> yeah, Blake, unless you go Blake's seven. seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, since we're talking about misunderstanding uh, titles, uh, it's time for me to come clean. Every time I've mentioned this on the podcast, or even in the episode in which we discussed it, the Doctor Who parody special, The Curse of Fatal Death, I have been calling The Curse of The Fatal Death. Like, for years. I mean, same, because... You've heard it from me. From you, yes. It's not the curse of the fatal death. It's the curse of fatal death. The curse of fatal death. So, so you've been I r- wrong for a long time about that. I literally had to go and, like, edit all of the scheduled posts. <laughs> we're, we're both dumb when it comes to titles. How sure. about that? I didn't say that about myself, but fine. I mean, you misunderstood Blake 7. No, in a completely reasonable were, way. Were you thinking it was, like, an android? Blake Seven. I had no thoughts. Like Johnny Five. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense to me. Yeah. So that's the summary. Uh, let's discuss some. Like, yeah. What? Okay. So let's talk about the characters. Blake. Blake. I mean, it's the it's the first episode. I'm not gonna draw too many. I'm not gonna have too big of opinions. But has real main character syndrome. Yeah. I mean, he's he's basically brainwashed throughout like the first half, and then the second half is like doesn't know what's happening. So. And then a couple of scenes where he gets, like, uh, indignant and, like, righteously angry, which is, those are the best parts. So, you know, it's not the best showcase, but also I, I never like the main character of anything ever like this, almost, so. I do like, cause I miss that they called him Blake. 
for you a little while. Didn't I didn't know. know who this guy was. I thought they were taking him to Blake. That's what I thought. I thought it was like, you know. How much of it did you spend thinking they were taking him to Blake? Uh, until they call him Blake when he's at the resistance. <laughs> they said it before then they and did. I missed it. I like what you said. Because like, I was like, this dude is whiny. And you're like, he hasn't eaten for 36 hours. I am, I am keeping that factor in mind. Because they do. They make him stop eating for 36 hours. That way all of the you know, there's chemicals and Chemicals in the food that make you more compliant. Gets out of his system, yeah. And so he's very, like, grumpy. Believably so. <laughs> yeah. I was like, honestly, I was like, this guy would be really annoying if they hadn't put in that dialogue. Because now I'm like, no, I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I, too, am very grumpy when I haven't eaten. <laughs> he's annoying to begin with, and then kind of boring, and then, because, I mean, he doesn't have anything to do. He's just in, in a cell. He, right. So there's nothing, it's it not is like, a... oh, man, I can't wait to see more about this guy in particular. Mm-hmm. I did feel like I can't wait to watch more of this, yeah. but it had nothing to do with, with Blake. <laughs> I mean, I do think it's an interesting thing. Like, what? Because, like, I even, I even said, like, what a lot to drop on this guy. Yeah. And then, like, your family's dead. You were the leader of this resistance. And, and he just thinks he's a guy. Yeah. And then to immediately after that, witness a massacre that proves all of that true. And then get framed for bullshit, you know? Yeah. That's a lot that that guy has to go through. Like, even though I'm like, the character is like, whatever, like, I'm I'm interested in the stakes. I'm like, yeah, this guy didn't do any of this shit. I hope they get him out, you know? Yeah. Other characters. Let's, let's, uh, the thief. The thief was probably my second favorite character. That uh, seems fair. Because he just, he had all the good lines. <laughs> he gets to be funny. He's got some good delivery. I like the smuggler. Yeah, I like her too. She's good. <laughs> we're watching it where like the thief i don't i don't remember their names i don't remember anybody's names which is supposedly maybe they're part of the main cast but they might also just die in the next episode i don't know i don't trust anything anymore (laughs) but when he's introducing them he says he says something about him being a thief and he says something about there being thief and smugglers and and he like looks right at her right at her and is like and those are the those are the nice ones uh, but then later you were like, wait, what does she do? And no, like, Blake she's... does oh, it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Not me. It was the character in the show. Because he goes, oh, so you're a smuggler? And I was, I was like, like, you we, missed that? We already had a whole scene about it. Yeah. Did you not miss that very intentional look from the thief guy? Don't you know anything about television language? Come on. <laughs> you know what that says to me? Huh. That was not scripted, the look. I bet that was, like, the director, like, look right at her when you say smuggler. Uh, it's supposed to be, like, a subtle clue. But in, like, Terry Nation's script is just, like, you know. Or maybe that was just Terry Nation protecting himself, you know? Like, what if they don't what sell that? What if they that? don't? Not trusting his audience. <laughs> or the director. And then you've got... I want to hit some minor characters real quick. Yeah, the guy that, like, does the double twist. That's great. That is so good. There's so much in this in this episode of like you were like fully just leading me and I was following every time, time and again. <laughs> you know what I think is great about that character too is like it's well cast because that guy can seem both skeezy but also like just a normal everyday guy. Yeah. Somehow he pulls both those off at the same time. It's very good. I think he's been on Doctor Who as well, but I don't remember what. And then the a guy that I wanted to be a main character until he was fucking massacred, the leader of the resistance. Oh my gosh, that guy came out and I was like, yeah, okay. This is look at this second doctor looking motherfucker. I wanna see more of him. I can't wait to figure out what his deal is. Nothing. He's dead. He doesn't have a deal. He fills Blake in on his past. Then does a, like, rousing speech to the troops and then gets murdered. He has been on Doctor Who and I know as who. He was in the last first Doctor serial. He was the general on the the base where, like, the Cybermen. God, you know what Blake Seven is? It, a name and a number. It's what Torchwood wants to be. Yeah, I could see that. It's adult Doctor Who, is that what you mean? Yes! <laughs> yeah, I can see that. You've hit the nail on the head, I think. We're done. So, okay, so, like, okay, so, like, tor- as Torchwood is to New Who, Blake Seven is to Classic Who, you know? Sure. Yeah. Adult Doctor Who, but for the classic series instead of the new series. So let's talk a little bit more about the lawyer and his wife. Just so good. They're so... He's got a certain Spockness about him. Yes. There's something also very interesting about, like, this character is... The morality? Excessively... Well, yes, but that's not... 
I was gonna say, is excessively naive in, like, trusting the system and, like, well, if that were true, that would mean thing shit would be real fucked up. I think it's so interesting how he is, you know, pursuing justice. Mm -hmm. Like, he wants things to be fair and just. But because, I think because he is a part of the system, and he trusts the system, he still does, like, fucked up shit. But he does it very casually in a way that he doesn't think is fucked up. I mean, it's he's doing it in pursuit of justice, but it is still bad. Like, he's bribing people. and What else besides bribing the... Uh, I mean, he breaks the he breaks the law by leaving the city. That's true. I thought that was very weird in the, like... In that scene where he leaves the city, he's not like, Oh, man, I'm, like, doing something super forbidden so that I can get to the truth. He's kind of like, well... <laughs> Here we go. Here we, yeah, it's very casual. And I'm like, does he not think that he's doing something wrong? I don't know. I thought it was interesting. It's like so like morally gray, but like in a good way. Mm. Not, and it's not hitting you over the head with it either. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not being like, ooh, we're being edgy. It's just, it's part of it. You know what I mean? It's part of the story, I feel like. Once he figures out that the children have been like tampered with, basically, he goes to check out where the massacre happened. And because no one goes outside of the city, they just left all the bodies there. So he goes and finds all the bodies and films them. Um, and that he takes that to his superior and he's like, that's very interesting. And then they gets murdered. And then he gets super murdered. So yeah, I, I thought this guy was going to be a main character because he's, he's... He's pretty good. He's good. He's way more interesting than Blake. And again, to be fair, he's where the plot is. That's true. That, that He is where the plot is. He's the one uncovering things. He's the and, one doing things. And it's such a gut punch to, like, have that at the end where, like, all of that was for nothing. And it's not... It's a very quick, fast scene. It's not, like, belabored, like... We don't actually oh, see them die. We, this character is dying. No, it's just, like... We just see... It cut like cuts away to, like, Blake getting on the ship. And then it cuts back to him. And, like, him and his wife are both dead in front of that guy who just calls in and says, It's taken care of. The, it's uh, the double such a quick shot of that that you're right. It's a real gut punch that you're like, what the fuck? It's so good, too. <laughs> it is. And it's not doing it in, like, an, the way that, like, sometimes Doctor Who in the Fifth Doctor era would just put, like, a, and things suck at the end. And you're like, okay. <laughs> you I don't can't know, wait for works. them to just ignore this <laughs> at the beginning of the next one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like saying this world that this series takes place in. This is Doctor Who. <laughs> it does a double. It does a, two things at once too. It one, yeah, you get that gut punch and like, oh, this place is thoroughly corrupt. There, yeah, and two, there's no, there's no fixing things from within the system. And two, you get all the exposition. <laughs> you get to know how they did everything. <laughs> so the audience gets to know. Blake doesn't get to know, but. So that's kind of the characters out of the way, unless I'm forgetting anybody that I don't think there might be. But I don't remember anyone in particular in the government. Oh wait, that's not true. The one, um, the woman, the woman from like the beginning. I don't know why I was like, oh, yeah, that's another thing. I was like, man, I like your vibe, <laughs> man. I mean, you're evil and all that stuff. That's another thing that's similar to what we were talking about the lawyer and stuff is just like how casually they are discussing how to fuck over this guy yeah and it's not they're not like ha, ha, we're, we're evil we're evil it's the banality of evil yeah, yeah. they're just like uh all right so we'll do this we'll do this and there's no evil music there's none of that it's just yeah it feels commonplace in this world you know i'm surprised how much i enjoyed this what we haven't talked about yet Mm -hmm. how well shot it is mm. that's yeah. definitely not something that i was expecting i can tell you that right now <laughs> they put the camera in a lot of good interesting places so it's just every once in a while where you're like oh that's a that's a shot okay especially with the the double twist guy he's in the foreground during that shot when they're like hacking the door yeah and you're like oh he's sketchy and then once you like figure out oh no he's part of the resistance he is subtly in the background when the guy is telling Blake the, you know, yes. his story. And he's, like, looking very concerned and interested. But that's just him being a spy. <laughs> yeah. It's good shit. Though they play it too much. This is probably the only downside of the episode, the flashback, that they play in full three times. Right. It's interestingly shot, and I was like, this is very... The first time you saw it, you were like, whoa, okay. This is cool and surreal and weird. Because, like, when he's telling Blake, you know, you were mind-wiping all that stuff, it does, like, this intense zoom-in on Blake's eye. 
And an intense close up on that leader guy's mouth. I did not like that. And it's like fading back and forth between the two. And it's like real claustrophobic. Yeah. And then it does the flashback as it like his memory unlocks of him getting his mind wiped. And it just like, it looks like this big machine that they put him in and it zooms way in and he's catatonic. Then we see him running away and these guards beat him up. Like there's a, it's a, his point of view is he's getting punched in the face. And then a guy hits him over the head with a club and it's just, I don't know, it's very impressionistic. Yeah. And then and you're like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> and then, again, they show it three full times. I don't, in particular, too, the shot of him getting hit with the club gets so much worse every time you see it. Yeah, because you're like, because they do a cut in between, so, because you can tell it, do, it doesn't connect very yeah, well. Yeah, like, it's actually quite clumsy now that I've had a chance to see it three more times. The punch looks good, though. The that, punch does look good. It's like a one-two. It's really cool. But yeah. Anything else? I mean, I just want to leave with, like, the overall impression of I've never... Okay, I have, first, I have a question, first of all. Am mm. I correct in that this was a pilot? Or is there, like, an unaired pilot? No, it's a pilot. Okay. I've never watched a pilot and left with equal amounts of I have no idea what the fuck this show is about and I can't wait to see more of it. That's such a rare feeling, I feel like. Right. That I, and that's what I was, like, overall really impressed with. Without, you know, here are the characters that you're going to have to like, and here's the structure and like spoon feeding all that to you. Without all of that, it was like a really gripping like episode of television where, Mm. like you said, it was tense. There were moments where I'm like, I am so stressed. I am so stressed. And like it ended and I was like, okay, well, I guess we're doing this. We either got to start doing this podcast now or I'm not seeing them for the first time on the podcast because we got to play the next one. I got to know what happens. I got to know. And I feel like that's really impressive to do on plot over characters. Yeah. I like the characters. I like them. But again, the ones who are going to be in it, we see very little of. Right. And that's just not done. <laughs> That's just not how, by and large, television works. And it was fascinating. It's interesting. Doctor Who kind of has a similar pilot of not being what the show's going to be like. You know what I mean? It's creepy and atmospheric. And you're like, what is this? Well, and it also made me think of Farscape. Mm -hmm. Where Farscape's pilot starts and spends a lot of time on Earth with characters that you won't see again for a minute. And also they all hate each other. (laughs) Yeah. I think they were, that was a thing Farscape tried to do at the beginning. It's like, it'll be interesting that they all hate each other and they'll cause, like, conflict between them. And then they are, like, eventually like, oh, that's, that's just boring. exhausting to watch. Yeah. We always go back to Farscape. I really, watching this was like, I'm curious to see how... I've heard the ending of the show is amazing. Really? Yeah. Like, we're iconic. Gonna, all right. We're just going to have to watch it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, I will say more about what you just said after the ad break. You know what now is a good time for? It's time for a promo for the Cosmic Pizza Podcast. The Cosmic Pizza Podcast, you say? Hmm, that sounds delicious. What is that? It's a delicious slice of life. In every episode? In every episode, where we talk about conspiracy theories, cartoons of our childhood, Star Trek quizzes, movies that we've liked, pod racing, general pop culture, fantasy recasts. But what we don't talk about is pizzas. Right here on the ESO Network. And we're back. Tony, do you... Uh, no, wait. I don't have to do that anymore. We don't, we don't have to do... We don't have final, final thoughts. thoughts. We, we just did them. discussed them all. Yeah. So, you said you'd like to see more of this. And I imagine the people out here would like to see more of this. Yeah. Uh, so, hey. There's a little thing called Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> If you'd like us to do more of these, uh, continue these spinoff podcasts we've 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 mm-hmm. done, consider donating to our Patreon. Right now, one of our stretch goals is to do the Star Trek one, but if like if you want us to do this one or one of the other pilots we've done, let us know. Yeah, I mean, any feedback. I honestly, if like five people were like, "God, I really want you to do this one," I'd be like, "That's an absurd amount of people," and I'd probably do it. <laughs> the you know the only deal with the Patreon is that Joe edits all of our stuff, and he also so works and has a day job. So yeah. that's where the Patreon really helps us out. Joe does freelance. He could take on less freelance stuff and do more of this, the more that it pays. So, mm-hmm. And I'd love to do this but yeah, more often. Any of 
the any of the um the little pilots that we released if like you particularly like that one let us know the whole point of that was to experiment with some new things and to try something new so if you like the star trek one the hiking one any of them i also really want to do the hiking make the, the hiking, hiking one, one regular was, the hiking one was nice i like that i think it would just be good for us <laughs> It might be it might be a seasonal podcast. <laughs> I also, yeah, when it's warm, we'll do it when it's warm. Yeah, I also really like the idea of people listening to it while they hike. While they hike, and then we're all we're just taking a walk with people all over. That makes me feel warm fuzzies. Thank you to uh, everyone who is a Patreon patron. We have quite a few of them, so thank you. Yes, thank you so much. I, honestly, truthfully, this would have ended a long time ago without you. <laughs> We've uh, been going for like what? Eight years? Yeah. Is that right? Something like that? We would have gotten stressed out and quit, but... <laughs> but it's because of you that yeah. we keep doing it. And the people who aren't Patreon patrons but are fans, you guys rock too. <laughs> you can't buy my love. You can't buy my platonic parasocial love. <laughs> yes. But if you like this episode of the podcast, you can check out more on WatchYourAssalon.com. You can also find our podcast, our Patreon, and more at Linktree slash Watchathon. And I want to give a special shout out to Vince and EL for providing us with our amazing theme song. Hey, thanks, Vince. You can check out more of their music at vinceneel.bandcamp.com. And if we uh, do do one of these spinoff podcasts, I'm probably going to bug them until they make a, a, a new theme song for whatever that show is. Because <laughs> it'd be weird to just put the Rasslon one on a spinoff podcast. But uh, tune in next time when we are going to answer your questions. We're going to do a show called Talk With Me because the other, the hiking one is called Walk With Me. This is Joe's pitch. So I just want you to remember. This one's not a pilot. This one isn't a pilot. What is it? It's just a a chance to interact with our fans. Okay. Uh, Just answer fan fan mail. Joe means all of our friends Joe harassed into sending in questions. I did. I thought this was a great idea and then nobody sent questions and then like two days ago I was like desperately scrounging for some. But some of you guys uh, sent questions. If you're listening to this now I'm like oh well I have a question it'd be too late for us to answer it in that episode. So but feel you free. You can always ask us anything on Twitter. Uh, or Twitter or Facebook or our email whatever. Watchathonrassalon at gmail.com I should really know what our email is. I thought you had it all in front of you. No, I was I don't. giving you an opportunity Opportunity to give our socials. I don't know our socials. I think that's watch your ass on most places. Yeah, with a watch your rass. Sometimes it's you rass. Yeah, it's, it's listen. What, I yeah. registered everything and. <laughs> It's messy. Just look up watch a thon rassle on and you'll find stuff. Put the dashes in there though. It's watch dash a dash thon. God, we're so confusing and hard to find. We should have worked on our branding. Yes. If you do have a question, send it to us and we'll answer it. We'll probably do it on the podcast, too, if you want us to. But after we do that Q&A episode, we'll be back with two more pilots. We'll be doing uh, The Watchathon of Raff and Don, where we talk about the 2003 animated TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, show. We're going to be specific.